This is all about financing your startup. As I said, it's an overview. So the best way to look at it is in terms of risk and reward, ultimately. That's the game, in essence. Everyone's trying to work out how to get as much reward as possible on as little risk as possible. Now, just to, out of interest, I want to just also just to make sure everyone's here and actually watching and listening can hear me, is I got a question like, what is the least risky investment that you can think of? So can anyone put in the chat, what's the least risky investment you can think of? And uh, I'm not including angel funding, of course. <laughs> so what's the least? If you're going to make an investment tomorrow, what would be the least bonds? Great. Yes. Um, so you've got like these highly banked bonds, these very low risk bonds, commodities, a little bit less so. Investing ourselves is fantastic. So that is a really good uh, vehicle. That's probably actually that probably is the safest because that always gives returns. Index funds, it's fairly risky. So what I'm going to go through. So thanks for that. This fantastic medical cannabis. Yeah, well, that that uh, it's got. Yeah, it's not probably not too risky at the moment. It's quite a strong option. So I would say that the government bonds and what they call government CDs are the least risky investments you can make because ultimately they're backed by the government. They can always print some more money if they run out. So the chance of them you know not you're not getting your money back if you're going to make to get a government bond are like really low but however because it's very very secure then the interest you're going to make off it the reward is going to be like super low like if you're going to do a government bond or maybe even do a government cd which is basically a savings account and then you might get four or five percent another reward's not fantastic but if you were to do an index fund, there is more risk there because really, ultimately, who knows with the market in the short term? So there's a chance of a 10, like a 10% return on the money, but then you don't really know. And then it comes, then you go deeper into it and the more risky it gets. And so I just want to give you like an overview. So if we zoom out at the top end, which is like government CDs and government bonds, and we draw right down to where, we, where we're dealing, which is we're going to deal with startups, which often make some investors completely shudder when they think about it because the risk is so high. Uh, and some like if you get professional investors, for example, some will invest in these government bonds and CDs, and then they'll go into property, they'll invest in property, which is not so risky, but then there's, there's a little bit of boom and bust. And if they invest in a property that is a little bit dilapidated and things go wrong, there's still risk there. And then, but some will invest professional investors might invest 5 to 10% and more risky elements. So they might start getting into investing in startups. So they'll tell their wealth manager or their wealth manager will tell them, hey, why not give some of these riskier vehicles a go? And that could be potentially your startup. And it also works in terms of loans as well. So we're going to like deal, what I'm going to do is look at the levels of the game and then have a think about where you are and where you sit right now. And then that really helps you see what players you've got available and how to actually play the game and how to de-risk your opportunity as much as possible. So we're going to look at the non-technical term called super risky, um, which is ultimately often called pre-revenue, which sometimes is also called pre-product. So this is the stage where uh, maybe hands up who's in this zone right now, for example, where you've actually just fleshed out the idea you maybe tried a few things and you've got like a prototype kind of on the go or working on the prototype. So hands up, hands up, if you can get the hands up on this one, hands up who is actually in that zone right now on this stage. Okay, well, maybe the hands off are not working, but I, I suspect there's quite a fair amount of you in this stage. And this is like normal. So this is where you're, you maybe got some, um, you're looking for capital between 5,000, 150,000, and there's the big questions of risk is like, will your product work? Uh, right? Maybe, for example, I've got one client that's got this electronic goods product, and they spent like two years working out, trying to make sure this product works. Because up to this point, up to that point, the risk is pretty high, that they can't even validate that the product's going to work to investors and to any other partners that are getting involved. But now they've got a product that actually works. It's highly complicated, but they've they managed to figure it out. Now that has increased evaluation in their business because that's been solved. But there's still the problem of like, will people even want it? Now they did an equity, or they did a reward campaign with 
a Kickstarter, and that has validated that enough people would want it. So it seems pretty sure that it's, they've got a market for it. So they have kind of, in some ways, covered that risk. But for many, you still got that element of like, okay, we produce it, but but we really don't know if people are actually going to go for it. So the, the risk is pretty high. And when you look at the players that are available, you, the first ones, I'll deal with the obvious ones first, is, is the people that love and trust you. This is going to be your family and friends. They probably wouldn't even have to look at the business plan. Maybe maybe not even the product. They don't really care. They just believe in you. And they're willing to back you and give you a loan, give you maybe investment, and then you can get out of the gate pretty quick. Although, having said that, though, I would make sure that you, whatever agreement you have, you have it in writing. So it's not just verbal agreements because you know, so many times I've come across deals that have gone really badly wrong because they haven't got it in writing and they also haven't warned them of the risk. And there's other elements like it might be overvalued. So you would pin, pin down a valuation is way too high that you can't justify it on a later round. So there are a few things that could you know, make it difficult. So uh, it's best to bear these in mind. Now, I'm not going to go into detail on all of these because okay, give you an example. I did one webinar. I go on for 90 minutes. I just like, and this is a condensed not like 90 minute version into 20 minutes. But what I am going to do is I'm going to offer you a guide at the end, which I do as a handout on this longer webinar. And it will go into like a checklist of all the options that you do have available. So you can actually in your leisure, go and tick off the ones that would be appropriate for you at your stage. And also it's a little bit of a workbook session at the end of it as well. So, so but do take notes uh, because I will be covering a lot of ground even on this short time. So. Then the other ones are loose ties. The loose ties are regarded as people that kind of like and trust you. So these are maybe most of these are going to be sitting in your LinkedIn account, or maybe people you worked with in the past, or that friend that you used to play squash with, but you lost contact with, that person you used to go for dog walks with, whatever it was, but people you kind of lost contact with, and they know you're aware of each other and you do like each other, but you just, you know, life gets in the way and you've lost contact. I've often found that these are the best ones. So I've had many clients that I've worked through, helped to get capital, and often those are the ones that get neglected. So they think, ah, oh, they they do I'm sure they don't have any money, there's no point. But when they do take the effort to reach out to them, either it's directly on LinkedIn or on email, it's quite amazing what can happen. On several occasions, I've had hundreds of thousands of pounds raised just on that one and then that one avenue alone so and then there give the startup loans uk so this is a government backed loan scheme it you can loan up to 150 sorry up to 25000 and um but it can you can start at as low as 5000 maybe even a bit lower and this is an unsecured soft loan with an interest rate that's about 6%, which is extremely low these days. And you don't have to have a fantastic credit rating, but if you've got a really horrendous credit rating, you could find it tricky. But the beauty of this is that if you're under two years trading, is there's a very good strong chance that you could actually get this loan, 25000 But ultimately, it is, a, it is a personal loan. And it is offset against the businesses, and you have to give some kind of business case. Now, if anyone's interested in this, do reach out to me because I do know delivery loan partners, and they are not all kind of equal. And there are some literally the good, bad, and the ugly in that realm as well. But if anyone wants to, is, is thinking, well, this looks interesting, maybe it's for me, and it will help cover the gap in this particular super risky stage, then, then I would be careful, carefully select the delivery partner that does that, because there are dozens of them um, down the country. And if you've got a good partner, they'll make a good application, they'll give you good coaching and advice around it, and they don't charge anything up front. And then they can put the application in, and then they only get paid when the loan gets approved. So that's a very good option. You got grants. I'm not going to get into that because I could be a very long time. But ultimately, the grants in this zone could be something like the your local regional loans called uh, it's all part of the LEP structure, uh, uh, which is backed by the government. So the best thing is to find out your local LEP, call them up and then find out what particular loans or even so soft loans or grants they've got available in that particular region. They all work differently. So, you know, you have to literally call them up because don't go to the website, it might be actually out, out of date. And so that's grants. I'm going to get into it. There's Innovation UK grant, which is a much bigger grant, and it does sometimes work for this super, super risky phase, but, and it's all 
it, it's like a whole game in itself but do have a look on the website if that might be for you that's a good idea and then the other thing you could do is go on to the grantfinder.co.uk which is another resource and that's available at the British Library, by the way, as a as a free database there. But normally, if you were to get the database yourself, it'll cost quite a fair bit of money. But there are the City Business Library also has the database, so I do reach out for that. And obviously, some angel capital. So that's another kind of player, but they have to be the angel capital that are very happy about the risk. Well, not particularly happy, but they're very they've got the appetite for this super risky phase or pre revenue phase. But as a consequence, what will happen is that they'll want the valuation pushed down. It could be as low or under a million pounds, sometimes even under half a million pounds, which means they'll have a significant equity stake. So the warning here is that if you get in at the super risky phase, ultimately it's going to be expensive for you in terms of releasing equity or even in terms of interest on loans, except the startup loan scheme which this is why I always mention it on pretty much every webinar. And then you've got the next phase, which is like still dicey. and it, But this is actually post-revenue, which means that you've already validated the fact that the product works to some degree. And also the fact that at least some people want it. And maybe you're generating some revenues, could be 20,000, could be in just a few thousand, and maybe even up to about 200,000. But then the risks are still there, substantial. But the main risk is, do people want your product? Or do enough people want your product? You establish that some people are willing to buy, and they could be just your immediate family and friends. But will complete strangers never heard of you will actually keep buying your product? And so it's not just new ones as well. It's the old ones will they keep coming back? What's the return rate of them coming back? And also ultimately, does the business model work? Is it likely to make a profit? And when you're in this zone, then this opens up uh, even more options it options up some of the options that pre-existed on the first one the super risky phase so you still got obviously your family friends loose ties and maybe you're, if you're under two years trading um, startup loan scheme will still apply for you and then grants to angel capital definitely and this by this point the angel capital you'll be able to raise more money and also because you've got a little bit less risk in the game, the valuation will go up, which means it's less expensive for you to raise money at that point in time. And then you've got, so in this zone, you have got some debt funding that can, comes up. So you've got debt funding, for example, the funding circle, which I will advise you have a look at, look at because it's a, it's a little bit of a shortcut for banks. It's they're much, much faster than banks. And they're much more open to actually looking at applications from uh, companies that are even just one year trading and um, it don't even have to have a significant amount of turnover but anything's even up to 50,000 they'll have a look at capital on tap is quite a well-known card nowadays that sits outside of your own bank and means you can constantly have this revolving credit based on the revenue that you're making and then you've got things like um, IWOCA, which is used for instant working capital, as you can imagine, that's pretty expensive, and it is. So all of these start opening up the the loans available, but they are have to come with high interest rates, because again, they have to be rewarded for the risk that's still in the game at this point. Now we get on to less risky. So this is where you might be growing the company a bit more. Then the repeat customers are coming back, which is good news. But the question is, can this scale big enough to break even or even to get an exit? The banks are more interested in you breaking even. And obviously, angel investors love you breaking even. If you're in the realm of VCs, which this category or this stage, probably still not quite ready for VCs, but they ultimately want to get to exit. In fact, angel investors just want to get to exit. exit. And that's their reward. So angel investors don't get interest but they're looking to get a 10 times return on their investment and then get an exit in five years or five to seven years time. And that's their big payoff. So every deal that are looking at, they're thinking, can I get a 10 X return off this investment? Because to me, it's still risky, even at this less risky stage. And they're thinking, yeah, can I get that? If I can't, if it's only five times, and if they look at your business model and they do all the maths, five times money back, you might think, well, that's pretty amazing. And they'll think, no, it's not really. It doesn't counter the risk that's still in the game. But then this opens up a load of other kind of areas, like you've got the angel investors, 
it might also open up some small funds, not usually typically the big VCs, but it might have small VCs, which is basically private investors that pool their, their money into this small fund. And then you've got invoice discounting, which is that you've, you've actually got an invoice from a, a, a customer or a client. It's a big one. It's maybe thousands. And now it's slowing you down because you can't access that money and you have to wait 60 days, 90 days. Instead, you can sell the invoice and get the financing that way. And then you get it paid into your bank account within days. And then you get charged an interest, usually 1% to 2%. And then you get trade credit. So by this point, because you're slightly less risky, then you might be able to get uh, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, perhaps off your your people that are actually giving you the product or the service in advance that you can resell. And that is really, really a, a, a very uh, useful kind of in fact some businesses that i've come across that is sometimes the only kind of avenue for funding their business and ultimately they get paid they pay the supplier after they've got paid from their customer so they can keep this revolving uh, cash coming in and out of the business and then there are many other debt options still available but thankfully because you've reduced the risk it's less it's the interest rates are much less than the previous still dicey phase so just getting into four risk reduction methods, because again, it's like all about reducing the risk because the more you can do that, then the better deal you're gonna have and the less expensive it's gonna be for you as a business owner, as an entrepreneur. So the first thing to look at is the gross profit margin. Bankers will take scrutinize this very closely and so will investors. Investors know that if you've got a high gross profit margin, then you can weather most storms. And if you make mistakes, it's more likely you can get out of it and you can overcome it because you've got a high margin of error. Whereas if you've got a, a very low margin business, as in your gross profit margin, which is the difference between cost of goods sold and what you like to sell it to a customer, if that's high, and I'm talking high as 70% plus, now it's not always achievable in every industry, but for example, if you're running a restaurant, I would highly recommend it. And if you've got a service-based business, again, it's almost like the minimum that you need to make it work. Now, some areas, like I said, will might not work out that way, but still try and get it so that it's high as you possibly can. So you're in the higher echelon of this gross profit margin. And um, it could be that you've never even thought about it. In fact, that this is the one thing that's going to put other investors and other debt options completely off you. So it's just best to just examine that. The other thing is the business model itself. When you start moving through getting customers, then basically the lower the you, it costs you to buy a customer and the higher lifetime value, then the, the less risky it gets. So these are two numbers that you really need to pay close attention to. So again, just to reemphasize that the CAC is cost of acquisition. What it costs to buy one customer. Now, if you're paying 20 pounds to get a customer, and you you only make ten pound profit. Obviously, that's that's a very risky model. In fact, it's probably very unlikely to work out, unless the lifetime value that customer will keep coming back and keep reordering, and the lifetime value is in the hundreds of pounds. Then suddenly it's looking much better now, and the risk has been reduced. So have a good think about the business model, and then have a think about the target market. Is the single target market the most profitable or the easiest route to your general market? You don't have to hit an entire market, but just focus on the low-hanging fruit first. Well, actually, could significantly reduce the risk. And then finally is market fit. So this is where a lot of entrepreneurs go a little bit wayward in that they just throw their product out there. And for some reason, it's just not working, but they need to constantly reiterate and test the market and ask the customers, ask your clients as to what has to be improved for you to now buy more or even buy in the first place and just keep split testing adverts could be Facebook ads or different channels. Maybe you want to sell on YouTube, sell on your TikTok, or maybe even direct to consumer or go B2B, whatever it is, you just keep testing, keep iterating and optimizing your system because ultimately you're creating an algorithm and the more predictable that algorithm, then again, the less risky it gets. And then that means the better, the more deals you can have available and the less expensive it gets to you as an entrepreneur. So what do you do when you secure capital when it's still super risky? Well, 
what you need to do ultimately is you want to leapfrog this the provider or the finance provider whether it's going to be an angel investor or is it's going to be a bank or it's going to be the funding circle or something like that or even one of the revenue credit cards so which are again are pretty expensive but if you think about like what do i actually need the money for and who's got access to this already now i'm going to give you just one example because it's a bit of a time constraint but let's just say that you need the money for uh, a a website or an app um, then instead of say you need 20 fifty thousand pound to build the app or the website you go direct and go to a venture builder someone that is open to taking an equity stake rather than um rather than just charge the the normal going rate or maybe you can do a difference maybe they'll give you they'll half the going rate and then half in equity this means cuts out the middleman means you can leapfrog over a potential angel investor that you'll have to get otherwise to put in 10 or 20 10 or 20 000. now obviously this can go all different types could even be for manufacturing products like you need the first batch in and it's going to cost 50,000 100,000 go direct to the manufacturer and try and work out an equity deal or a loan deal or various other deals I've done this with many many clients believe me it does work it doesn't seem obvious but it works in many areas even marketing whoever's got the database that you want go to them and do a deal instead of raising the money to get the database so try and leapfrog as much as you possibly can and finally I've just got some quick questions that will fuel momentum ask yourself what stage am i right now when you look at that table and the the levels of the game where are you right now because that will really help you understand which players you need to approach and then how can you actually reduce the risk to them and then finally oh not finally but can i change the business model to get going with less capital so maybe you're going in a bit high and maybe you're going for example a b2c model that you're going to have to generate an app and a website but maybe you go b2b to start with it takes up less capital and then finally what value can i give to partners in exchange for the resources required so this is what i've just talked about how do you leapfrog and shortcut the actual process and to cut out that middleman and then Finally, I was going to ask some, some final questions here in the time we've got left. And uh, also, I just want to point out a few more resources. You've got the, obviously, Purposeful Project. You've got loads of resources there. If you're interested in, uh, use the, there'll be a link maybe in the chat. Uh, and then hit, there's a link on the page about accessing that guide that I told you about. Where you, you've got a checklist. You can go through the different types of funding that you can potentially use and then do subscribe because i do loads of different free events uh, that uh, that can give you much more insight and actual detailed kind of information about how you play the funding game as a whole and that's it so if, if you've got any questions then um, i'm going to have a quick look and then I, I will respond to them and so we've got so far i've got like one question so if you if there's any more i think i'm and i'll, I'll read it out um, i'm looking for funds loans for product development team hire and marketing of my ai powered luxury modest fashion startup in london we've just launched our limited edition pre-sales collection we offer both physical and digital fashion including nfts which would be the ideal fundraising method for us so let's just get us like if we talk, look at it like which stage you are right now then we just launched our limited pre-edition pre-sales collection which means you're actually in the the most risky stage which is fine i mean everyone starts there so but it means you have got a collection so your post product which means that for example for you if you don't need a lot of capital to get going i would probably recommend as definitely the startup business loan so uh, again if you needed help on that just email me and so you can see the email at the bottom there and email me and then i'll just shoot someone that could help on that it's up to twenty five thousand on that so it's a soft loan other areas so if you're pre-selling the product both physical and digital so you could actually maybe get some actual pre-sales revenue in there there's not many debt options apart from the the startup loan but also you might be some the route for some very early say stage seed investors if you've got what you've got there is a scalable business model and so and also there might be some grants available for you depending on 
the where where you actually located. So you might want to look at the grantfinder.co.uk and also call up your regional LE, what they call it, LEP, and find out what soft loans and what grants you've got available as well. So that's it in a nutshell for without taking too long. Is there a website forum where we can find angel investors for different sectors? Well, thankfully, angel investors are much easier to access these days. When I started this, it was basically in darkened offices in Mayfair. And you don't really know, it doesn't even have a, like a name play outside. But nowadays, there's loads of databases that you can access. You can, the, one of the best places actually is the obvious one, unfortunately, is LinkedIn. LinkedIn, and I would, I would advise you to get LinkedIn Sales Navigator if you're really going in you know, and you really want to build that list out. And then search Angel Investor and then the sector that your, your, your business is in. And maybe even the region to say in the London Southeast or you're even in, in, even if you're in Guildford, you might find some very local investors because there is definitely a bias for finding investors. So I'll start with LinkedIn. Then you can go to Crunchbase. Crunchbase have got an, an amazing database. But unfortunately, if you want to like dig into loads of them and had download hundreds of them on, into your own private database, then you need to pay a few hundred pounds to be a member there. But there are such other databases such as grit.io, G R I T T, that is also a free resource, actually, that one. And then you can put search, certain search terms in there and then download the list from there. Occasionally, you'll come across these public databases that someone will post, could be on LinkedIn, but often they are mainly VC databases. So I wouldn't waste your time on VCs if you are in any of these three stages. When you've got much more traction, then VCs come into play on, a, on another level. But up to that point, yeah, I would focus on individual angels. And if you get an individual angel list and it's put on a public form, forum, then there's a good chance that list will be burned. It'll be, it'll be loads of, there'll be everyone. Uh, approaching those angels so you'll have to be very specific about your approach as to why you're reaching out to them in particular and how it's a good match for them in terms of your sector or the sector that you're in and even the region so i think that is it i'm just going to check if there's any more oh we have got one more question here from gerald we are registered in the uk but our fintech startup is operating operating in nigeria how can we best raise funds up to 100K? So the important thing is that you are registered in the UK and the directors also need to be have residential addresses that are listed in company's house. And But if you're registered in the limited, it doesn't matter particularly where you're operating or where you're targeting the business. So if you're operating in Nigeria, I'm guessing you're trying different regions, then there's still a uh, a chance that you can, and it also again depends on which stage you are at. If you're FinTech, obviously it's quite a good zone to be in. A lot of angel investors are interested in FinTech. By purely the scalable nature of FinTech, and also it's a hot market, which means that the market's growing at an above average rate, which again reduces the risk. So it might be that, uh, funds of 100k could be micro investors or could be 10k 20k investors maybe could be family and friends or loose ties as i mentioned before so you reach out to your linkedin connections and then let them know what you're doing and then say you're opening and here's a little another resource i'm going to give you is uh advanced subscription agreements which is very popular at the moment and very useful a number of my clients are doing them and the this is a very much easier and accessible through seed legals who have automated the system so it might be worth you using that as in a vehicle the, uh, by the way the advanced subscription agreement is where you you give the you basically sell the shares in the future in return for a discount so you give a discount on the valuation can all again about risk and reward but as I'm seeing we're running out of time now so I'm going to get into that but do look up ASAs because it is pretty hot at the moment and look up seed legals and they've got what's something called seed fast on there so that could be an opportunity for you gerald and so i'm going to leave you there so we've we've hit the 30 minutes and uh, i hope you found this super useful and again if you've got any more questions do reach out to me on that email pgrant at the funding game .uk, or discord i'll be answering some questions there and also i'll be thinking of doing a open q a as well if we get so many questions it'll be too many to deal with on discord then i might open up a, a just ask me anything kind of session on funding that is 
And so that's it. Thanks everyone for attending this. And this will be played on YouTube. It'll be recorded there if you came in late and you missed a lot of it. And thanks for your questions. And uh, yeah, thanks for attending this. Thank you very much.